All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Brown from Beyond Clean, and I'd like to thank you for joining us in this first of many collaborative webinars between Beyond Clean and Census Technologies. Something I've learned very quickly by working with the census team is that they embrace the team experience. And they do so by understanding that providing for the sterile processing community happens through nurturing the individuals like yourselves. We're excited that you're here, and this, exactly, this is exactly why they've launched the Census Continuing Education Series, True Grit, True You. Throughout this education series, you'll hear from educational professionals, healthcare professionals, surgical tracking experts, and other diverse industry experts who will keep you current on what's trending, as well as keep you in compliance with your yearly recertification credits, which is always a bonus. Today's session will discuss how to remain Amy compliant and Joint Commission ready with an electronic tracking system. A quick note before we get started, you have a Q&A box on your screen, so feel free to submit questions throughout this presentation for the presenters. Without further ado, I am excited to turn it over to Jacob Long and Jeff Rocket. Hello everybody, this is Jeff Rocket from Census Technologies. Thank you for joining us today. I'm gonna to begin with the first half of our presentation and Jacob Long will jump in for the second half of the presentation. We'll take questions at the end of the presentation. All right, well, thanks again for joining. Let's get started. We're gonna start off with a poll question here. So if you just please answer this question as we go through the slide and onto the next slide. So what method of sterilization record tracking and management is currently utilized by your facility? Are you using paper tracking, electronic tracking system that's not sensor track? Are you using sensor track? Or are you just here to the lecture to learn about sensor track and electronic tracking? So please take a few minutes to answer this question. All right, objectives for our presentation today. So at the conclusion of today's presentation, you should successfully evaluate electronic documentation and the compliance with industry standards. For the purpose of this lecture, we'll focus solely on select AMI standards. You also should be able to understand the collection and presentation of electronic reprocessing documentation for quality assurance purposes. This includes infection control reporting, support of patient safety root cause analysis, load or product recalls, and regulatory audits and inspections. Lastly, you should be able to look at any standards and recommendations for paperless record keeping. The three main references we'll use for today's presentation are Amy ST58, Chemical Sterilization and High-Level Disinfection in Healthcare Facilities, Amy ST79, Comprehensive Guide to Steam Sterilization and Sterility Assurance in Healthcare Facilities, and Amy ST90, Processing of Healthcare Products, Quality Management Systems, Processing in Healthcare Facilities. Now let's go and look at our poll results. All right, so looking at our poll results, 19.6 of you percent responded that you're using a paper tracking. 14.3% responded that you're using an electronic tracking system that's not sensor track. And 56.3% responded that you're using sensor track. Lastly, 9.8% are not using a system or are just here for educational purposes. So really, as you can see, as a trend for today's audience, we have a little over 70%, 70.6% that are using some sort of electronic tracking system. And as a whole, that is where the industry is going. So let's move on with our presentation. First, let's look at Amy ST58 recommendations on electronic record keeping for chemical sterilization and high level disinfection. What is the Amy rationale here? Well, it's really all about patient safety, regardless of the method of reprocessing. Documentation shows compliance with safe practices, identifies trends, and it shows areas for quality improvement. Without proper documentation, you can't show you're safely and correctly reprocessing surgical instrumentation. Looking at ST79 recommendations for steam sterilization, see Amy is consistent with recommendations on electronic record keeping. 
for sterilization, monitoring, and load identification. Again, this is regardless of the method of reprocessing. Why does Amy make the recommendation for the use of electronic tracking system? The rationale is the ability to demonstrate compliance, identify trends for quality improvement. This goes back to the fact it's all about patient safety. For each sterilization load, the following information should be recorded. The load number, the specific content of the load or lot, including the quantity, the department, and a specific description of the items. For example, towel packs, the type of name of an instrument set, the type of name of an instrument. The exposure time and temperature, if not provided on the sterilization recording chart, should be captured as well. Operator identification should be captured, the results of biological testing, if applicable, the results of Bowie test, DIC testing, if applicable, and the response of chemical indicator placed in the PCD, if applicable. Any reports of inconclusive or non-responsive CIs found later in the process should also be recorded. Now let's look at ST79 and quality management systems. Amy ST9, or I'm sorry, ST90. Amy ST90 clearly states that organizations shall have a quality management system in place. ST90 defines the key parts of an effective quality management system, or QMS. It's important to note that a successful quality management system supports consistent patient safety by working to prevent adverse events and identify root causes when and if they do occur. So ask yourself, does my facility have a successful quality management system in place? How does my quality management system support patient safety? How effective is the quality management system and the audit process? The use of electronic sterilization software and a robust recording and reporting system designed around any standards supports consistent patient safety. This is reinforced by a successful quality management system and audit process. Electronic documentation supports patient safety and provides standardized record keeping, supporting to support an effective quality management system. ST90 additionally states you must develop and conduct quality audits at planned intervals. These audits help determine how effective your processes are and if you are meeting established requirements. Electronic record keeping easily supports the quality audit process. Records can easily be retrieved, data can easily be accessed, sorted, cross-referenced, tabulated, and distributed as necessary. Reports can be customized, saved, set for future generation and distribution. We all know that maintaining paper records is a very labor-intensive process. With paper records, we typically have folders or envelopes sorted, stored, and stacked in boxes or piled high in filing cabinets. Additionally, there's the challenge of maintaining legible and accurate records, protecting paper records from damage, and keeping records readily accessible. So how do you maintain accessibility when eventually paper records need to be moved to remote storage locations? This is where electronic record keeping really shines. Records are standard, consistently accurate, legible, and most importantly, readily accessible. Additionally, Census Track routinely records a backup of the entire process. This ensures you have secondary access to historical records for quality purposes. Now let's look at a scenario where Census Track and historical record keeping can help with surgical site infection root cause analysis. Census Track maintains a complete history of the surgical container and its content. This history includes all location and process scans. This includes decontamination, maintenance, assembly, sterilization, sterilization load result documentation, and tracking to a surgical case, patient, provider, and procedure. Let's say a patient is two weeks post-op from a lap gastric bypass surgery, and they develop a surgical site infection. The hospital decides to conduct a root cause analysis. You're asked to show the sets used during the case and provide the reprocessing history. Imagine providing needed information on the sets used, maintenance performed, documentation, assembly and sterilization history via paper record keeping. Where did you put those records? What ones did you maintain? 
With SensorTrack, you can quickly identify the case by running a case tracking report. From here, you can identify the sets used during the case and eliminate the sets sent to the OR for the case but that were not used. You can identify that basic lab set number one, camera set number two, and scope set number one were used for this specific procedure. Once you've identified the sets used, you can quickly cross-reference them to look at the history for each set. With this information, you can provide the RCA committee with specific information on the documentation to include maintenance, assembly, and sterilization history for each set and each instrument within the set. For example, you report basic lab set number one was returned for maintenance two days prior to the procedure. You show the committee the sets were properly assembled and basic lab set number one had proper LEI testing performed by an SPD technician and this technician's LEI competency was current. Your sterilization records are complete. The records show all three sets were sterilized with the correct cycle parameters, the biological indicator run and load results negative. The chemical indicator shows proper change. The RCA committee then asks for records showing proper sterilization testing. You quickly provide electronic records showing a proper sterilizer warm-up, fully did testing, biological testing, and biological control testing. In this scenario, you provide the RCA committee with all this data in a matter of minutes directly from your desktop computer without searching for any paper records. So in conclusion for part one of this lecture, let's talk briefly about quality audits and some examples of how an electronic tracking system can assist with your audit process. One of the main benefits in electronic documentation is data is readily accessible for audit purposes. You can easily and remotely access sterilization records to ensure minimum documentation requirements are met. I recommend that SPD leadership reviews reprocessing records as part of the quality audit process. You should review sterilization load and load indicator results daily preferably at each shift change and prior to issue of instrumentation. Ensure you develop an audit process that matches any ST58, 79, and 90 compliance requirements. Routinely look at your audit process and ensure expected documentation is consistently captured and that it aligns with any changes in regulatory standards. Electronic records and routine quality audits will help you identify and reduce any organizational challenges. Ultimately, an electronic tracking system will make your auditing process quicker, easier, and ensure you're providing the best quality and patient safety. This concludes my portion of the presentation. Jacob will take over and will dive more into more detailed information related to specific performance of electronic tracking system with reference to SensorTrack. Thank you again for your attention today. Jacob, the presentation is all yours. Thank you, Jeff, and on behalf of all the Census Technologies, I just want to thank everybody in attendance today for joining us for this presentation. We really do appreciate the time and effort of you all joining us um, and, and, and going along, learning all the things that we're going to be covering, not only in this initial presentation, but as well as the rest of our TrueGrid presentations for the remainder of the year. Um, as far as quality audits are concerned, as Jeff mentioned, there's a lot of, there's a lot of challenges that can arise if you're not utilizing electronic tracking systems. Um, the performing quality audits of these reprocessing records, it proves to be an invaluable strategy to ensure that your records are documented correctly. And depending on the method of sterilization record management deployed by your facility, audits could take days or they could just take moments. And what we're going to look at you know, for the remainder of this presentation is, is really the benefits that arise when utilizing electronic tracking systems, especially in regards to performing these quality audits. Um, all these audits need to review all the expected documentation, as Jeff also described, as, as laid out by various AMI standards. So we need to capture things like our cycle parameters and results, any sort of machine images, chemical indicator results if applicable, the contents of loads, and if there's any specialized loads, like an IUSS cycle, we also need to be able to document a reason for the cycle, the patients associated with that cycle, and all these, all these um, facets of information, once again, being able to access them quickly and readily is really a, hot, a, a really fantastic benefit of an electronic tracking system like SensorTrack. And as far as organizational challenges are concerned, um, record retention as well as record, record access are probably two of the largest hurdles, especially with that of a paper documentation um, method. Um, once, once those paper records kind of get sent off and stored and you need to get them back, there's a challenge right there. Just being able to access older documents that might be stored off-site or at a storage facility 
or they might be buried in a binder or a paper folder somewhere. An electronic tracking system can mitigate all those access hurdles. As far as record retention, AMI standards also lay out that we need to make sure our records uh, maintain in working order. So if we do have paper records, they can't be damaged beyond, you know, damaged to the point where we can't read them or interpret them. And, you know, we, we run into problems there as well. As far as electronic records and their retention, they're backed up on servers and they're electronic. You don't have to worry about them, you know, aging or deteriorating. So the two of the largest hurdles, that, that being access and retention, we're going to talk about how using an electronic tracking system to perform quality audits really makes those hurdles a lot less challenging, um, especially when we're deploying you know, an effective tracking system like SensorTrack. Any effective tracking system should have a way to access you know, those records and results. Um, any tracking system should have the ability to search based off the parameters that are required or laid out by any standards. So commonly, we organize our loads with some sort of load number and date that will, let, that will identify to us the date that the cycle was run, as well as the machine that was associated with that cycle. And being able to find those quickly can, once again, it can, it can, be, a, it can be an issue of taking days or just a matter of moments. Let's say that you do need to access a load from maybe almost a year ago, and you have to contact a storage facility. Well, then you have to be able to get a hold of that storage facility. You have to be able to know what box or what area of records that one particular load or set of loads might be in. And then it's also the, the turnaround time to get those records back to you. If we utilize an electronic tracking system that has some sort of search feature like the one displayed here with SensorTrack, we're able to just quickly search and find what we're looking for. So if I knew that I needed to find a load for a particular machine, I could type in some sort of key, key phrasing for that machine number. If I knew a particular date I was looking for, that would make it even more simple. I could just type in the date into the presented search field we see here, and we would see all the loads from that day. Um, we would be able to know that when we're searching based off that date or that, that cycle or that machine number, we would be able to really quickly find those records. And so once again, record access is one of the largest organizational challenges I think we see with any sort of paper tracking. Um, being able to quickly access these, these records with just a quick search really mitigates a lot of those issues, and it makes it a lot less of a headache being able to find some of those older records. An, an electronic tracking system should also have the ability to collectively combine everything that's needed into one nice location. So once we are able to locate the record we're looking for, such as with low results or some sort of search feature, we should have some sort of collective repository where we can easily access all the information that we need. Um, a lot of, you know, such as the, the information that Jeff laid out, such as cycle parameters, user information, indicator information, all that applicable data that we're required to have, if we can have it in one nice spot, it makes access and, and reconciliation pretty simple. And so what we're seeing here is SensorTrack's example of what we call our load list and load details page. This load list is where our customers interact with their cycles in order to input the proper cycle information. In the top right, if you notice, there's a report button that's circled. When we interact with that report button, it presents to us a consolidated listing of all that applicable information. It presents to us the user, the cycle information, the content, the cycle result, any applicable indicator results, including biological or chemical indicators, and we can also be presented with any sort of images that we might have attached to this, to this record. So if we have a document scanner in use and we're taking electronic copies of sterilizer tapes or chemical indicators, um, we can also attach those to these records. So not only do we have the, the documentation that's input manually, we can also be able, we're also able to back up that, that information with, with physical records, with images. And within SensorTrack, that report button, which is highlighted in the top right, will collectively show all that information. And I like to call it like a one-stop shop. It's where I would go if I ever needed to access anything about any particular load. And so over the course of the next few slides, what we're going to see is that one report um, spread across a few different slides. So we have different sections kind of cut up. And so, so as we go through the next few, if you can imagine, it's just as one nice big report. They're all connected. Initially, we should be able to have our pass-fail parameters for any cycle. So we should know whether or not the cycle ran and it was to parameter, as well as what specific cycle it was run at. As we can see here, as highlighted with that little blue circle, I can see that this particular loading question has a pass, as well as a very specific pre-vac cycle. 
I can see a sterilization temperature of 270 degrees, a sterilization time of four minutes, and a dry time of 40 minutes, in addition to the users that scans the load and the user that saves the load. So in that one little paragraph, I know who initiated the load, I know who saves the load, and I know what the results of the load were, in addition to the machine associated with it, as well as the date and timestamp associated with it. This is just one tiny piece of the information we're expected to, to maintain, but here it is presented clearly in a nice paragraph format. You all may also notice that there's a barcode above all that information. An effective tracking system should, should allow multiple avenues for you to access this information. Within SensorTrack, we can just scan that barcode from our main menu, and it'll bring us right to this screen. So if we do happen to have that barcode accessible, we, we are able to get, to get to this information in just a matter of seconds. In addition to just the cycle information, we, can also, we should also be able to have very quick access to all indicator information. This would be the middle section of that load report that I was discussing. So right, right underneath the information we saw on that previous slide, we would essentially see this table. And this table would clearly lay out to us any and all indicator information that was associated with this load. So I can see on the first line item there that my first indicator is my challenge pack biological. I can see that the indicator's name says BI. I can see that the result says negative. And I can also see the specific product that's deployed by this facility. Adjacent to that, I'm presented with a lot number for that biological challenge series. And right next to that, I also see the start time or the incubation time, the, the, the moment that the incubation was initiated, and by who. And then right below that, I also have a read time. So not only are we documenting real-time incubation um, initiation as well as recording, we're also documenting the users that might be doing either of those steps there. And these these timestamps and user stamps are all captured real time. A user doesn't have to input this information. And that's another added benefit of using an electronic tracking system like SensorTrack. We no longer have to worry about logging the times or being able to access the time or making sure that we log that correctly. As soon as those results are input, for example, as soon as, as, soon as Janice recorded that that biological was negative, that timestamp was automatically recorded. And now when we're accessing and coming back to these old records, I can very easily see that. Beneath the biological, I can see I can also have results for my biological control. So I have a biological control, I have the product, I have the associated lot number, and the same timestamp information. Now if we notice, the biological control doesn't have a result, nor does it have a read time. So this would provide us at a glance kind of details into what might be missing with this record right here. The biological challenge has a result that our control doesn't. So that would imply to me that maybe somebody just didn't result that positive for that control for the day. So even within just a, a simple load report like this, being able to interpret that table identifies a lot of information to us. The, the simple fact that there is no result for that biological control communicates a lot to me as the person looking at this. Beneath the biological control, I can also see there's a line item for chemical indicator. An electronic tracking system should provide the ability to, to document any sort of chemical indicator. In SensorTrack, we have configurable chemical indicator settings that we can apply to any of your reprocessing machines. That way, the product is completely customizable. So if you utilize 3M class 5 indicators, we can, we can input that as the product. Or if you utilize a specific you know, other type of chemical indicator that's applicable to your cycles, we can input that product information as well. Just like with the biologicals and controls, we can also see the lot numbers as well as the date that that chemical indicator was input and read in addition to the user. Once again, this is just a small portion of our load report, and this is communicating to us all the process indicator information that's associated with this load. There could be many more line items here depending on the cycle. We might have additional indicators, not just chemical indicators for these loads. For example, when we document our Bowie DIX or daily tests, we would, see, we would be presented with a similar table to this. And instead of saying BI or BI control, it would say Bowie Dick, for example, and we would be able to see the same information. If I scroll over, in addition to my indicator results as well as the cycle parameters, I, sh I should also have the ability to document and record any images associated with these cycles. Here I'm presented with a sterilizer tape a class 5 indicator, and as I can see, I can, it's legible, and that's key. Being able to read these images that we're able to document electronically makes them useful in the future. 
So I can access these images at any time, and then I can go ahead and make sure and confirm that the sterilizer parameters that this load is associated with are accurate in my tracking system. I can see that I can go ahead and fill out the sterilizer tape too prior to scanning. So we can have our technicians sign off on the top and bottom portions of this tape, as well as highlighting any sterilization or, or cycle parameters that we need to highlight. Utilizing the document scanner allows us the ability to capture a numerous amount of in images. Um, for example, we only have a tape and a, a class five indicator here, but if you have a flatbed document scanner deployed in addition to an electronic tracking system, anything that can go on a document scanner can essentially be captured. So you can capture you know, any sort of washer test strips, you can capture any sort of flat paper chemical indicator associated with low temperature sterilization or steam sterilization. And we can have all those images in that one nice spot. And so once again, these images would only be one piece of that sensor track load report. So if we combined all three of those slides, we would be able to see in one collective location the cycle parameters, the cycle results, the load numbers, the associated technician, all the accompanying indicator information if applicable, as well as any images that we documented digitally that we could back up to support the records that we put in manually. And these are just, this, that, that was just an example of one of our sensor track load reports. And those, hopefully those highlighted and showcased the benefits of having a paperless tracking system. First of all, we have all that documentation at our fingertips. Being able to access all that information quickly from anywhere where, where electronic tracking system might be installed um, solves so many issues that we run into whenever, whenever it comes to being able to access our records. I mentioned earlier, you know, that scenario of what if we had to access some sort of records that were at a storage facility or somewhere, somewhere that was far off, right? It might take days. It might even require us to pay a fee or some sort of, you know, sh shipment fee. And then we have the turnaround time. And then not only that, when the box actually gets to our facility, then we have to actually dig through that box and find the load we're looking for. Um, so that could take days, maybe even you know more than a week. And so having a paperless electronic tracking system, you know, it, it provides you all that information in just a matter of moments. Utilizing some sort of search feature, you can find the load in seconds. Being able to locate that load and then open it and access that load report that then provides us all the information we would need to know about that one particular cycle. And once again, that would only take moments. And we wouldn't have to worry about those paper records getting damaged or frayed or lost. And we wouldn't have to worry about the turnaround time to access them. Having a paperless electronic record solves so many of those hurdles that we discussed earlier. Reviewing and reconciliation is also another large benefit of electronic tracking system. Not only do we have the ability to quickly access these records, but we also have the ability to quickly recognize any issues or outliers and, and, and reconcile them essentially. And what we're gonna look at over the next few slides is how we can use a reporting capability to reconcile any missing or incorrect information. Being able to access and find records is one thing, but being able to locate any issues or errors is, is an entirely different situation. We might, need, we might find an error in one of our records and that leads us to the next question, what do we do about it? And so once again, we'll, we'll discuss some reconciliation strategies across the next few slides. Another, and probably one of the, another really large benefit to, to electronic tracking is that these documents are saved forever. We've kind of already discussed that one of the issues we have to worry about with paper records uh, uh, is their quality. And they might deteriorate over time, that they might receive water damage or they might be illegible, especially if you know, handwriting's hard to read or pen or paper pen or pencil fades over time. If we have an electronic tracking system, we can very easily make sure that these documents are, are accessible forever. And not only are they accessible, but they're accessible and legible. So we don't have to worry about them getting damaged or, or unable to be read or interpreted. Being able to access this stuff electronically is a huge benefit. What we're gonna spend some time now reviewing is, is some reporting capabilities. Any effective electronic tracking system should provide a you know, reporting capability that allows us to extrapolate all that real-time data that our system is creating. For example, in SensorTrack, we utilize real-time scan points throughout the continuum of care. So a container, for example, should be scanned when it gets to a sterilizer, as well as when it gets to sterile storage and onto a, a procedure in the OR suite. Um, and 
And that's a lot of data that's being generated, especially if there's multiple users, you know, throughout our facilities. We might have, a, you know, we might have multiple users all, act, you know, all actively scanning at the same time. And so where does all that data go, and how do we access it? And so a, a valuable tool is a reporting module or reporting capability. That way, not only do we know that we have the comfort that these records are being created in real time, but we have that added benefit of being able to access them. In addition to that, we have the ability to filter and customize them to find exactly what we're looking for. So if we know there's particular dates or, or machines or assets that are in question for review, we can use a reporting capability to, to narrow in and find exactly what we're looking for. CentiTrack provides a large variety of reports. We have reports across a number of categories. In regards to sterilization, we have quite a few. This is one of the, you know, one of the flagship goals of an of a electronic tracking system is to make sure that we can control and access and reconcile all of our sterilization records. Two of the reports that we're going to be discussing today are our indicator results summary report as well as our load compliance report. I added there the, the sterilization load summaries report just to review the fact that we also have a report that's completely catered to knowing what was sterilized. The two reports we're going to discuss are more associated with making sure that, that load results and indicator results are, are, are correct and easy to access. Um, but in addition to that, we have a number of reports that will help us know, you know, that will help us track sterilizer maintenance and sterilizer downtime, as well as any load content summaries. So if I need to know what was sterilized when, I can also deploy various sterilization reports to get that information. The first report we're going to discuss is a census track report that we call the Indicator Results Summary Report. This report is catered entirely to making sure that we can quickly read and interpret any and all indicator information that's associated with our sterilization records. What we can do is we can filter and customize it to either show some sterilizers, or we can go ahead and just look at all of our sterilizers, such as here. And what we're looking at here is, is data generated from a Sensitrack customer. And I can, see, I can see all their sterilizers in that first column. I can see their OR sterilizers, I can see their SPD sterilizers, and I can see their sterad sterilizers. In the adjacent column, I see the time period at which we're looking at. The column next to that lets me know the total number of loads each of those machines had over that reporting period. So I can really quickly see which machines I might be using more frequently or less frequently. The rest of the columns are all particular to, all particular to saying biological. So any sort of electronic tracking system should be able to verify that these biological and indicator results are easy to see and and provide us an ability to locate any sort of outliers. Um, and so the way we would interpret and analyze a report similar to this is we would look for columns or numbers that, that stick out to us. So for example, if I look at my BI quantity column, I can see the number of biologicals that these, that these sterilizers ran over this reporting period. And then right next to that, I can see how many failed. And so that's a really nice way to look for outliers because that column, as we can see, it has all zeros. And that's probably what we would want to look for. We probably want to be able to know how many of my biologicals failed out of all those total ones. And so if I saw one, if I saw, you know, a one in one of those columns, and I didn't know that we had a failed biological in that reporting period, that might stick out to me as something I might want to investigate. And we can kind of approach the rest of those columns with the same type of perspective. If I, the next column says BI unrecorded quantity, once again, if I should probably be seeing zeros in there at the end of my workday. If I see any sort of numbers in that column, that would very quickly indicate to me that there's biologicals that went unrecorded. So whether they were, you know, they might not have ever been incubated or they were, the incubation was begun, but it was never recorded. And so that's two examples of how we could quickly use those numbers to just even see if there is an issue there. And then that type, of, that type of perspective applies to any indicator that we can add to this report. So if you notice adjacent to the biological columns, there's Bowie Dick columns as well. So I can apply the same type of rationale to all the Bowie Dicks that are run at my facility. I can see if any failed, and I can also see if any went unrecorded. And once again, if I see any outliers or any numbers that are unexpected, I can interact with this report and be able to find out the further information that I might be looking for. 
And so this indicator result summary report provides a really good summarized snapshot of any and all indicator information that, that's, that's relative to their, to their respective sterilizers. And this would help us greatly being able to remain AME compliant and JCO ready. Because it would, we could run this report daily, and that would be a really easy way to make sure that all my indicators are good to go. That way I have no surprises at any time. An, an added benefit to an audit like this is, is that multiple people can have access to this. So I might want to task my, my leads or my shift supervisors, and I might want to have everyone run this report during their shift. That way we have a nice overlap of auditing. Some, one person might miss something, and the person on the next shift might catch it. And so deploying a report like this in, in real time and being able to check it and audit daily, this goes hand in hand with our quality audits. We're able to know what we're looking for, and it allows us to quickly see any unexpected or, you know, information that we might not really be, want, be wanting. An added layer of benefit to a report like this is that these are interactive. So let's say I did see an outlier. Let's say I did notice that one of those columns there had a number that I wasn't really expecting or I didn't really want to see. For example, I might have seen a biological fail, and I might not have known about it. I might see that there's a number in my Bowie Dick unrecorded column, which would communicate to me that that Bowie Dick went unrecorded. And so what's great about an interactive report is we can just click on the field that's in question, and this report will drill us down to provide us additional information. And so if we click any one of those sterilizers on the far left, we're going to get to a second screen that presents us this drilled down data. And this drilled down data is within the same report. So I don't even have to leave or run an additional report to get this information. I can stay exactly where I'm at, and I can access the information very quickly. And as we can see, since I clicked OR sterilizer number three, I'm only seeing results for OR sterilizer number three. And I can see all my loads consistently there in, in chronological order. I can see their load numbers. I can see their cycle information. I can also see their load results. In addition to that, I am then presented with a number of columns associated with my indicators. If you notice, some of those boxes have X's and some of them don't. Those X's allow us really quick access or really quick visibility into an issue. So if there's an X in that box, it indicates that that load is essentially guilty of that column. And so we see that there's a BI fail column. Luckily, none of those columns have any X's in them. And that would communicate to me that all of those loads, you know, throughout all those loads, None of those BIs failed. And we can kind of use that same you know, perspective with the rest of these columns. But with the BI unrecorded column, I don't see any Xs there either. And that too would immediately communicate to me that none of those loads had any biologicals that went unrecorded. And so we can use that rationale to really quickly reconcile. So we can deploy a report like this for really two strategies. One is just a surface audit. Um, if we're doing daily audits or quality audits, this is a really fantastic way to just make sure we have a nice level set of proper record documentation. Um, if I don't see any outliers or any unexpected data, that's a quality audit right there. Um, being able to see that I don't have any unexpected indicator results, you know, gives me a good feeling at the end of the day. I know that I can, you know, nothing's going to pop up and surprise me tomorrow or at some point later in the future. In addition to just being able to see this information, um, the fact that it's interactive leads us to, to another valuable aspect of this, and that's the reconciliation piece. I mentioned earlier reconciling a load or reconciling cycle information is an entirely different issue as far as just record, record retention and access. Once we, you know, once we keep those records and we access them, what if we do have to do something about it? What if we do notice there's something incorrect or something that we need to you know, give a little more attention to in the future? The ability to reconcile with an electronic tracking system also, you know, it's also much more efficient than having a paper system. If we're relying on a paper system, it really, it really boils down to being able to find what we need. And, and what if we can't find that sterilizer tape? What if we can't find something we're looking for? Um, being able to reconcile a load electronically, it'll take us right to the load of information that we need, and it might be able to help, help answer any questions. We can drill down further. So what, what we're looking at now is a particular load. And this load was drilled into from the same report. So once again, without ever having to leave the report, all we had to do was click a particular load number, and it would bring us here to the specific drill down details for that one report. 
So I can see what the result of that Bowie Dick indicator was. I can see the specific Bowie Dick product that we deploy at our facility. I can see the lot number associated with it. I can see the date that this was resulted. And then I can also see the images associated with it. So not only do I have the input record, but I also have the image record there as well. A good example of how this would be used to reconcile any sort of sterilization record for auditing and compliance purposes would be what if that Bowie Dick wasn't resulted? What if, what if it said NA, and, or what if, I'm sorry, what if it didn't say anything at all? Um, and we came here. Hopefully we would have that image there and then we could see just at a glance, I can see that Bowie Dick indicator has passed. I can see that the technician went ahead and scanned a sterilizer tape to it. And being able to have that at a glance visibility into our records would help us be able to come back and reconcile these loads. Now, if information is missing or incomplete, another really fantastic strategy that an electronic tracking system provides is it lets us know who interacted with these cycles. So if there's a particular person that happened to you know, have a glitch or something go up, you know, go awry with one of these records, we also know who created that cycle. Because um, once again, an electronic tracking system should capture real-time data as it occurs. So I should know who's doing what when it happens. Um, so a really fantastic reconciliation strategy to remain compliant is if and as we catch issues, is working with our teams to know how to interpret and see that as well. Um, whenever, whenever we do find issues, making that a team effort in conjunction with electronic tracking system, it makes auditing consistent and it also gives us a really good feeling because if we know that everyone knows how to interpret this data and how to look for it, it, it makes remaining compliant much more simple with a system like this. The next report I'd like to discuss is called our load compliance report. This load compliance report it, it, it's a report that's very similar to any sort of indicator results report. But a report like this can really help us remain compliant in an even larger you know, you know, um, swath of information. Because not only do we see a lot of the same information in that indicator results report, but we can also see if any images went unrecorded or if there's any tapes associated. As well as you can see, there's also washer tests associated with this report. So this is kind of like a one-stop shop for any sort of indicators and cycle results. We can see the individual machines. We can see their sterilized date and time. We can see their load numbers. And then we can see who scanned them, what the results of those cycles were, what the cycles actually were run at. And then just like with that indicator results report, we can utilize those Xs to be able to identify any issues that might stick out to us. So for example, if we look at the image unrecorded column, about you know, two thirds to the right there, I can see that there's quite a number of X's in that column. And everywhere I see one of those X's, that would indicate to me that that relative load number is missing its image. And so if we kind of compare this to a paper system, you would actually have to go through and flip through the, the paper information for each one of these loads, and you would have to verify this manually. Being able to use that X right there and just really quickly see which loads are good and which loads aren't gives us a really powerful reconciliation tool. That way we can, we can do what used to take maybe days. We can now do in a matter of minutes. And this can really help a facility remain compliant, not only because it's easy to interpret information, but the fact that it makes it easy to, to access and edit and, and uh, reconcile these records also, you know, it's, we're probably more privy to do it because odds are we're not going to be digging through a box at a storage facility to reconcile. We have this at our fingertips. And so we can access all this information from any workstation. So for example, our office or from a computer in, in an SPD department or in an OR suite. Anybody with the capabilities to access reports such as this can really easily see information as well as have the ability to reconcile it. And so if we, if we take those X's in those columns and we apply them to all those columns, we can see that we, if we did have kind of checkered results, it would be really easy to figure out which loads you know, were missing what or had what. And so I can see here that I actually have an unrecorded control as well. So there at the very bottom of the BI control unrecorded column, I can see that, that, you know, I can see that the load result is unknown. I can see that the BI control went unrecorded. And so that would be a fantastic example of a load that we might want to reconcile. Since I have an unknown in my load result and an unrecorded control, as well as an unrecorded image and tape, that should stick out to me as a load I might want to do a little bit of digging into. And so just like with the indicator results report, I would be able to click that load number 
and I would be presented with all that additional drill down information for that one particular load. And so, once again, being able to perform quality audits within the application is one thing. So being able to use our load results to, or, or some sort of search feature to access older records, that's one hurdle there. Being able to, to edit and see all the information in these records and all the reconciliation associated, that, that's another hurdle that an electronic tracking system can help us clear pretty easily. Um, and then having a reporting capability takes all that real-time data that we're generating and extrapolates it into a simple, easy to interact with, and easy to view kind of table or chart like this. And then we also have the added layer of benefit of interactive records. So not only do I, can I easily find what I'm looking for, but I also possess the ability to, to go back and review my records, see what machines are associated with them. Um, and and what's, what's really good to mention here is what's, what's really awesome about a lot of these electronic tracking systems is so much of this is configurable. Um, what we're seeing here as far as location and load number formats and things like that, um, that can all be configurable to your facility. And so having a scalable electronic solution like this, you know, it, it can really help you remain compliant very easily, especially compared to, you know, if we are at a paper tracking system. Um, being able to access records and, and making sure that they're readable, legible, you know, those are all hurdles that we all worry about, especially in regards to inspections and things. So we've reviewed a lot of the benefits of an electronic tracking system for your reprocessing record management and reconciliation. Um, we've looked at how, how, how great it is to just have one nice collective area where we can review and go over all the information that might be associated with any of our sterilizer records. Um, and, and we've talked a lot about the differences between paper tracking and electronic tracking and a lot of those obstacles that we encounter with paper tracking. And so the benefits of, you know, using electronic tracking system or deploying a system akin, akin to, to electronic tracking system for all this record management, uh, hopefully we've been able to showcase how, how quickly and easily it can now be to access old records and also how it, it helps us not worry about record retention so much. Um, some, as we all know, also real estate is really valuable, especially in STD and ORC. Um, and so we might not even want just paper records all over the place. So, so all the added layers of benefit of electronic tracking system as far as record management and reconciliation, um, the, the, they all help us face a lot of these obstacles you know, much, much easier. And then as far as why we want to maintain these accurate and accessible records, having, having, having the, the comfort of knowing that I can access these records at any time, having the comfort of knowing that I can access them and reconcile them. And not only that, being able to interpret this information well um, it, it, it gives us a lot of comfort, especially in regards to, to inspections and making sure that we're compliant. Because if we can provide easy to interpret, easy to access records, it, you know, a, a, a smooth running machine is just that. And so being able to access these records quickly and be comfortable auditing and reconciling them, it's an added layer of benefit. And then, of course, the simplicity. Um, simplicity of moving to a paperless record keeping system. Um, being able to deploy electronic tracking system, it might seem like it's a challenge. It's, you know, it's a challenge that might be not worth the risk, but it's 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 pretty painless to transition, as well as as well as the strategies that we've developed in order to capture all this information. Being able to scan, being able to scan our assets consistently, regardless of what type of sterilization machine they go to, and then being able to access all these records um, as soon as soon as we start interacting with this electronic system. It, it really clears up a lot of those worries that we usually have, um, especially when we see the ease of access and ease of retention. And I just want to say that on behalf of all the census technologies, as well as myself and Jeff, I really want to thank everybody for joining us today. I hope that we were able to showcase a lot of the benefits of an electronic tracking system and how they can help you or your facility remain AMI compliant or JCO ready. We've covered how we're able to quickly access records that we don't have to worry about how we're keeping them. And not only that, we can also perform a numerous amounts of reconciliation and investigation into these records. So what was, what was not possible before is now very possible, especially in the matter of minutes. We t I've talked a lot about time frames here and turnaround time. Um, what, what used to take days can now just take you know, a matter of seconds. And I, I hope that we've been able to showcase those, those benefits for y'all um, if, if electronic tracking system is deployed. Uh, 
All right. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Jeff and Jacob. As we prepare for the live question and answer session, I would like to draw your attention to the bottom of your screen. You will see a little icon that has the letters CE. By clicking on that CE icon, it will bring up a session survey that you will need to fill out prior to receiving your CE certificate. So if you can click on that in the next you know, five or 10 minutes and fill out that survey, you'll actually receive an email one hour after the session is complete with a link to your CE certificate. We're excited to get your feedback. We want to continue to improve these sessions and uh, learn from you as well. Additionally, you will find a list of downloadable resources and links in the resources tool on the upper right hand side of your screen. Feel free to take advantage of these free tools. You can click on those, download them, save them, and reference them, uh, share them with your colleagues, whatever you'd like to do. Um, like I said, in an hour, you'll receive an email. Uh, you'll have a link to this specific session on demand, and you'll also be able to register for the next webinar in this series taking place on July 30th. So with that, we'll get right into the questions. You guys have sent in some really great questions for both Jacob and Jeff. And so um, let's get started. The first question is more of a, um, uh, a question of defining a term. You mentioned LEI record, Jeff, and I would love if you can explain what LEI record uh, means. Sure, Lindsay. So LEI record is uh, refers to laparoscopic equipment insulation testing. This is the testing of the insulator for um, equipment that's used in laparoscopic procedures. Um, so LEI, um, that's that laparoscopic equipment electronic insulator testing. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, Jeff, another one for you. What kind of mobile devices are available to capture information in the OR setting? That's a great question, Lindsay. So in the OR setting, there, there's a couple options that you can use. So typically what you see with electronic tracking systems is a 1, 1D or 2D QR or barcode scanner to capture the information that's documented on a QR code for an instrument or a peel pack or a set or a piece of equipment or a barcode scanner that captures the same information. We are seeing in the industry some PDAs used um, we are seeing some mobile tablets used, and, but most commonly what we're seeing are medical grade uh, workstations. And these are mobile workstations um, that can be moved that have Wi-Fi, RFID, camera and scanner technology. So that's kind of what, where I see the industry going is, is a mobile lap, laptop or tablet device that's medical grade um, that's easily cleanable for infection control purposes. Thank you for that. I'm going to send this next question over to Jacob. Uh, Jacob, if temperature, load, pressure, and type of cycle is documented in Sensatrack, do we still have to load a copy of the load receipt? I would definitely encourage it. That's a really great question when we, we get pretty frequently. Um, I would definitely encourage it because, because a manual record that's input, I mean, that's, that's correct, it's valuable, it, it's there. But having that backup, having the ability to prove and support, you know, physically, we can say, look, this, this, this cycle and this load and these, these parameters, they were all documented. And here, here's an, actu an extra layer of it did, in fact, happen to, to this regard. And so I, I like to think of it as just, an, you know, an insurance policy, essentially. And then um, not only that, if we are scanning those, those records, if we do scan the receipts, if we do scan any sort of indicators, it also helps us go, you know, entirely paperless. We no longer have to, you know, you know hold on or, or maintain those, those tapes and things. I've interacted with customers before that are paperless. And, and they like scanning those things, even though they documented cycle information, because then they didn't have to worry about maintaining all that paper still. They didn't have to worry about keeping those sterilizer tapes in a folder somewhere. And they didn't have to worry about holding on to, you know, little chemical indicator strips and things. And so it just gave them that added layer of benefit of having the ability to physically back up the records that we're documenting and then also giving us the ability to go, you know, even more paperless and that we don't have to keep or hold on to those, those documents, such as the load receipt. So I, I would encourage both. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to send this one over to Jacob as well. Um, is this tracking system that you're referencing an open system, meaning can it connect to any brand of washer or sterilizer? That's a fantastic question. Uh, so we do have very good working relationships with a lot of the vendors on the market. And at Census, we're, we're, we're open to uh, developing interfaces for, for any facility as long as it's concurrent with modern times. So something I usually, I usually tell people is if it's a really old machine, 
that's probably the only instance where I'm going to say no to that question. Um, but if it's an up-to-date um, machine, um, we're pretty good with working with any vendor to develop an interface. Um, if we don't have one that, that's existing right now, uh, we will develop it. You know, that would just be a team effort between ourselves, the vendor, as well as the facility. Um, right now, we do have a large number of functioning interfaces that many customers do deploy. Um, and they work great because what they'll do is they'll automatically communicate all that sterilized information directly into the tracking system. That way, we don't have to worry about the steps taken to record those manually. The machine will do it for us. Um, but once again, we're, uh, at Census, we're more than open to developing interfaces um, when needed. Okay, wonderful. And Jacob, if a facility is using a flatbed scanner, how long are those records to be saved for? All right, that's another great question. Uh, so we, make, we maintain our records for at least 10 years, um, and we're all, all, we also make them directly accessible to, to our customers for at least 10 years. So that means they wouldn't even have to get a hold of us. They, they have access to those records themselves. Um, and so look, we keep those for at least 10 years. Okay, and I'm going to keep, keep throwing questions at you. Where is the expiration date? <laughs> Where is the expiration date for the lot number located? Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad I saw when that question came in because I know the exact slide that, that um, Sheila's referring <laughs> to there. Um, and so it, we were looking at the indicator results. Um, actually, would it be all right if I jump back to that slide so I have a talking point? Please do, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I saw that question came in when it didn't, and I, knew, I know exactly what she's talking about. It was right. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm just bouncing around now. I want to say it was, I'm just kidding, it was over here. It was, I'm looking, bear with me, folks, I'm sorry. It was this one, I believe. I believe it was this when the question came in. So we presented that we can see a lot number for our Bowie dip, but we don't see an expiration date field. Um, and so I've actually encountered that question quite a few times. It's a really great question. Um, now, since we don't have a specific line item there for expiration, we can deploy a number of strategies to get that expiration date logged there. There's nothing that's preventing us from typing it in that field as long as we mention that that's the expiration date. So we can also just kind of tab over a space over a couple times, type the word, you know, type the letters EXP or expiration and document that there as well. Um, on the previous page on our, let's see if I pick the right one. Yep, on this one, on our load details page, if you notice there towards the bottom, there's a line item that says add note. Um, unfortunately, the image is cut off, so we can't see the actual note section. But we also have the ability and provide the ability to add any free text notes to any sort of cycle. And I always encourage those notes to be used for things like expiration dates, as well as anything additional. So, so if there's expiration dates we need to log for any of our indicators, that's a good opportunity to use it. In addition to that, those notes can be deployed to really log anything. So if a load fails or alarms or aborts or we run into an issue with a cycle, uh, those notes are free text and they're forever. So once they're created and saved, we now have that, that record that's, that's kept and accessible directly with this load. Um, and those are probably two of the primary strategies that I've seen our customers deploy to log those expiration dates. Okay, great. And then one more and then I'll give you a little break. <laughs> Where no is the load? Where is the load compliance report located? Uh, this uh, attendee didn't see it under load or under sterilization report. Oh yeah, okay. So um, it might be because the access level for that one's turned off. You're correct in, in assuming that it is under the sterilization category. It is located there. It might be that just the screen for that is turned off. And so if you're familiar with access levels within our tracking system, um, you can go ahead and adjust your access level for the screen for your user group, and then you would be able to provide access to that report. The load compliance report was developed recently, so it wasn't part of the original sterilization bundle. Once we developed it and pushed it out, all of our customers got it. But in some instances, if an access level wasn't enabled to, to provide every report, you might not see it right off the bat. So I would suggest checking your access levels and making sure that that screen for that one particular report is, is viewable by your access level. And if you need any assistance with that at all, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Okay, great. And Jeff, I'm going to throw this next question over to you. What if someone messes up documentation? You can't change it like you can paper when you're using an electronic system. Can you address this question? So that's a great question. So the key is to ensure you have proper documentation from the beginning. Um, 
it depends and and how data is corrected really depends on the electronic tracking system in place. Um, we do have a method of going back and, and making a change, a one-time change as needed, but we really, I can't speak to all the systems. With our system, there is a method to make a small correction like that. Um, but it's really key to ensuring that you catch that before you move on to the next load. Um, so again, a little more difficult to do, but the, the plus side there is that you, ca you can't do that easily and so you prevent people from making changes that shouldn't be made. Great, thank you for that answer. Um, this question I think is a really interesting one. My sterile processing department has been encountering issues in which some staff from the OR fails to properly treat the instruments after a procedure uh, with the required enzymes and processes. Can Sensatrack help capture when this occurs and who's responsible for it? So Lindsay, again, great question. So we have a module called Quality Events Module that can be customized to capture occurrences like this. For example, we could create a, an event called OR bio burden or OR lack of prepzyme spray or enzyme spray or pre-cleaning. It then can be tied specifically to an instrument a procedure as well. Um, and so we can track that occurrence across um, to case tracking across to the instruments the procedures, the people involved in the procedures, or the specific instruments in the procedure. So yes, we have that quality events module that captures those items. Okay, wonderful. Uh, this next question, Jeff, our only ding we've ever received from an inspection was from overweight vendor trays. Can Sensatrack help us track and monitor vendor tray weight? Yes, yeah, so we have two processes for tracking vendor trays. We have a system called Loader Link, which actually reaches out to the vendor that the scheduler would use to request loaner trays, and that tracks the trays from time of request to time of arrival on the site, and then from time of end use to return to the vendor. Once the set arrives on site, we have a process in there that uses loaner module that then checks those loaner trays into the system and they're processed and treated the same way as a tray that, or instrument that's owned by the facility. You get the same documentation features as you would for a container or instrument owned by the facility. Okay, wonderful. Um, one more question for you, Jeff. If we have to issue a recall, how does that work in Sensatrack? So we, sorry about that, the dog's a, making a little noise. I think the dog wants to answer that question. <laughs> so we have a, a recall button where you would, re, you would hit recall button. Sensatrack then knows where those items are by location based off of the past location scan. If someone tries to then move that item to a new location or to a new process, such as to check it into a case, it will alert that individual that that item has been recalled and to return it to SPD. It will also give you a report that tells you where to go to look for those items. Okay, great. Um, and then Jeff, another question for you. If, <coughs> let's see, are there any patient safety features in Sensatrack? Well, Lindsay, most of Sensatrack is built around patient safety. So the biggest feature would be our ability to stop a process, to alert a process when something is scanned improperly, which is out of sequence, or has missed a process, or is due for maintenance, or has been recalled. So let's say, for example, that an item was not captured as having proper decontamination, but was tried to be scanned to a case. It would alert you that that is out of sequence. We could either put a warning in place that could be overridden if it was confirmed that an item was properly processed, or we can create an error or hard stop, which actually prevents the item from being overridden and using that procedure. All right, wonderful. I am going to send a couple questions over to Jacob. Jacob, is there any method of utilizing the case cart assembly feature for cart needs without OR scheduler applications? Yeah, absolutely. So we actually deploy a few different strategies to monitor and, and track, you know, any sort of case cart assembly event. And so if an OR scheduler app, you know, interface isn't deployed, we can actually, you, you can build case carts, you know, we usually say like manually, you know, on our end. 
Um, but there's a couple ways to do that. So what we would do is we would go ahead and, you know, build and label our case card inventory to make sure all of our case cards are labeled. And once our case cards are labeled, all we have to do is scan that case card first from either our SensorTrack main menu screen or from our case card assembly module, which is located in our workflow menu. Um, either of those of, um, strategies, once we scan the case card, it'll open up that case card for assembly. And so we would scan the case card first, and then we would be able to scan any assets that are going to it. Um, as far as being able to, to build it, we, we don't need the OR scheduler to, to conduct the event. Um, the OR scheduler is really beneficial for letting us know our pick lists or preference cards as far as what we need for these procedures. Um, but there's nothing that's going to prevent you from building your case cards manually. So once again, from either the main menu or from our case card assembly module, we just have to scan that case card first and scan all the assets to it. And then wherever we scan that case card to, so perhaps a case card goes to room five and it has 10 trays on it, uh, we wouldn't have to scan those 10 trays anymore. Everywhere that case card goes, SensorTrack's intelligence knows that what's on it goes with it. And so we can build those case cards manually and still continue to track wherever that case card goes throughout the periopt of the loop. Okay. Um, Jacob, the quality feedback module is not customizable on our user end. It's pretty much co cookie cutter. Can we modify the quality feedback tool to be more robust and also separate out SPD and periopt OR input? Yeah, that's kind of a that's kind of a good that's a good question. Um, so they are customizable. They it just might not be immediately recognizable where we do that. And so we can actually, if if, if y'all are familiar with the quality feedback module within SensorTrack, it has a drop down, and we use that drop down to select the particular events we want to log. So for example, you know, improper transport of instruments or or quality checks on containers, um, and that drop down for our quality events is fully customizable and configurable. It's just not customizable in that screen. So what someone would have to do is with the proper administrative access levels, you'd be able to go to your administration menu from our SensorTrack main menu. We'd go into administration. And then while in administration, we'd go to a module that we call LISTS, L-I-S-T-S. And within that module, there's a variety of categories where we can configure and customize a number of drop down lists. And one of those categories is, in fact, quality events. And so if we go to administration and list, and we select the quality event category, we then are presented with a listing, and we're able to free text into that field. So you can technically type whatever you want. You can create you know, a million events that are all kind of specific to your facility. And then as far as being able to be, be able to separate out events, um, what I've seen, I've seen facilities deploy a couple strategies to, to answer that. And one is they'll go off the user. So they'll know based off who created it um, whether or not that's an STD or, or perioperative OR input. Um, another strategy is, is they'll actually name the events. So when we're in that configurable list setting and we're creating and customizing our quality events, um, I've seen facilities actually just put the name in there. So like SPD and then colon, and then they'll, they'll, they'll list out the event. And just having that prefix there, so using some sort of prefix in the actual event name is a really good way to quickly identify whether or not that's an SPD or perioperative input. And once again, if you need any assistance customizing or locating that list, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Okay, great. Jacob, you mentioned that you can confirm a text competency. Is there a resource for SensorTrack functions for a serial processing educator? Um, yeah, absolutely. So I've trained a number of educators on, on just the competency module. It's really fantastic for, for managing and, and keeping track of any and all competency records. Um, and so in order to use SensorTrack, you don't have to be in the STD or, you know, the OR environment. If you are an educator or an analyst or something, you can have SensorTrack access at your facility. And our competency module is located in our administration menu. And as long as someone is given the proper access levels, they're able to create competencies, they're able to sign off on competencies and approve them. And we can also build in any sort of elements or SOPs that are involved with those competencies. So not only can we give them titles and descriptions, we can also attach elements to them. So if you have very particular line items as per an IFU or a particular facility, you know, specific competency, you can go ahead and type in there or even copy and paste all the line items that are applicable to that competency. Um, in addition to that, we also have an access control feature with our competencies that educators really like because what it does is if a user's competency expires or if they're not even signed off on it, SensorTrack will actually prevent them from conducting that event. So let's say y'all get in a new low temperature sterilizer and um, it's mandated that everyone be trained on it before they use it. Well, if a particular user didn't have that competency signed off or it expired, 
when they go to try to create or initiate that sterilizer load, our access controls will actually prevent them from doing it. So we have a really nice safety feature built into this. Um, and so if there is an educator that's interested in using our competency module, there's nothing that's preventing that. Um, and so if y'all would like any assistance with that, please, once again, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, wonderful. And Jacob, what happens when the tracking system goes down? Does it save as an archive? Yeah, we get that question a lot. Um, and so if a tracking system goes down, there's no need to worry. All of our records get backed up on our servers. And, um, and so even if you can't access that information on site, we have the ability to get that to you. And um, the market is leaning a lot towards cloud servers now. And so we have the ability to access that information via cloud servers um, whenever we need to. So they do back up an archive. And we do back up and keep those archives, so once again, for at least 10 years. So they're easily accessible and backed up. All right, wonderful. Um, <clears throat> a specific question for you, Jacob. Will the program interface with 3M incubators, or do you have an incubator, or is it all manual entry? <laughs> That's a great question. Actually, uh, yes, we can. First of all, we can interface with 3M incubators. And they're actually, it's an interface I actually really like. Um, so it, as long as your 3M incubator is a model that's able to connect to some sort of internet access. So a lot of the, the more recent models do have that capability. Um, but I just want to point out that if you do have an older 3M incubator that doesn't have an internet jack or internet port, we won't be able to interface with that. Um, because the way the 3M interfaces work is we need to ping the same um, IP address or same website essentially. So as long as your 3M incubator can be connected to the internet and it can be assigned a static IP address by your IT, uh, it's a very simple interface. Okay, great. Do, with the system, do techs still need to stamp their trays with load stickers? I would always suggest that, only because not everyone's going to have sensor track in their pocket when they're walking around or any electronic tracking system. And so maintaining that load sticker, it, it, it's a nice comfort factor as well as record retention factor because it lets everybody know um, just at a glance that you know, what load is associated with that asset. Um, we can rely on an electronic tracking system to access these records whenever we need to, but once again, we might not pay, you know, have a computer at our disposal at any given time. Um, and I would always suggest stamping your, your assets with load stickers, especially when we encounter that situation if an asset leaves our facility. If, if we happen to, to sterilize for an outbound clinic or some sort of outpatient surgery clinic, um, and we don't use load stickers, and they don't have the same electronic tracking system we do, they're not going to be able to pull those records. And so I would always encourage, you know, maintaining that process of, of labeling trays and peel packs with load stickers. Okay, wonderful. And I'm going to ask you one more, and then I'll give you a break and send the next couple over to Jeff. Um, All right. Do you, have, do you have to add the quality events module? I don't see it on our home screen. All right, yeah, we're getting a lot of questions about the quality feedback module. I like that. Um, and so I kind of talked about that a moment ago, but yeah, you do have to add to them. Whenever Census Track goes live at a facility, we do come with, you know, a, a handful of kind of prepackaged um, quality events that we can select from. Um, but that's, once again, completely configurable. And so someone with the proper access levels would be able to adjust and, and configure those quality events, and then they can also decide who has access to that module. Um, and so once again, it's completely configurable. And so you don't have to add to the quality events module unless there's things that you want to see there. So if there are events that fall outside of kind of our prepackaged, you know, you know, three or four that come with the system, then yeah, you're going to have to create them if you want them to be specific to your event. And then once again, those can be added if you start from our main menu and you go into administration and you go into lists. In the lists module, you'll have a quality events section across the top, a little quality events category. And then you would select that category, and then you would be able to add or edit any quality events that you'd like to see in your quality feedback module. If you, I might be misinterpreting the question. Um, if you can't even see the quality of feedback module, you might just not have the access level to see it. Um, so that I would, I would probably check access levels first and have someone with the administrative capabilities to review access levels to make sure that the quality feedback screen is, in fact, turned on for those users that need to interact with it. If the, if the access level has the screen disabled, then you're just simply not going to see it. So that might be why you all aren't seeing it. Um, but it is located in the workflow module. So from the main menu, if you go into workflow, you should see a quality feedback module there. And if you don't, then I would suggest um, reviewing your access levels to make sure that you do have the ability to see that module. 
All right, wonderful. Um, Jacob, grab some water if you'd like. I'm going to send these next couple over to Jeff. Uh, Jeff, do representatives from inspecting organizations know how to use tracking systems? Jeff, oh, I think sorry about that. I was, I was on mute for a second there, so I think I answered <laughs> no that problem. question to myself. So, so yes, we're we're Welcome seeing back. more and more that um, that representatives from inspecting organizations are familiar with electronic tracking systems across the board, um, regardless uh, of the type of tracking system. In fact, a lot of the these people come from within the healthcare organizations and have specifically worked with those systems themselves. They will often ask for certain reports or to show you certain modules within the system. So they're, they're knowledgeable enough down to knowing what is specifically in some of the reports of these electronic tracking systems and specifically how they work. Um, and that really goes to the point where, where you need to understand how your system works kind of one, one level higher than they do so you can quickly show them um, what they need to know and then move on to the next topic. Okay, great. Uh, this next question, Jeff, we have issues at our hospital with documenting periodic checks, such as eyewash station checks, um, preventative maintenance logs for various equipment like autoclaves. Can we use an electronic tracking system to help log and maintain these types of events? Yes, Lindsay, so mm -hmm. with that, um, you can you can you can use those type of events. We can record either um, by a location event recurrence or by a um, efficiency task recurrence for items such as capturing eye wash stations, sterilizer cleaning and maintenance, um, and even terminal cleaning within SPD uh, and assembly or decon or sterilization areas. Okay, great. Uh, what if something happens and sense track goes down or anything occurs that would prevent me from accessing our records? And I think Jacob may have touched on this, but if you have anything else to add to it, that would be great. Yes, yeah, so the, the backup system, having server backup is, is a key feature. Um, you know, we're continuously taking snapshots in, in the background there. Um, if it does go down for an extended period of time, um, and you capture that in a, in a paper record that can, we can then assist with putting that back in documentation in your electronic record system. So we have staff, a support server standing by to help with those situations. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to send these next couple of questions to either of you. Um, have you considered creating a report section with reports that are joint commission related? I was on mute for that one too. So <laughs> Jeff and I are about in a thousand. Um, as far as anticipating reporting categories, if that's if that's a particular category that you think we get some benefit out of, please please shoot us an enhancement request or notification. Um, I, as far as considering creating a report category or a specific report like that, I can't speak personally to, to anything that I'm aware of, but I know that we do maintain you know JCO readiness kind of awareness as, as far as what filters we we make available to certain reports. So we make sure that reports that, that any sort of inspecting body would be concerned with, that we provide the, the line items and the data that they need. So you, so you will be able to access any records that they're going to be um, requesting and stuff. So as far as a very specific report or category, I can't speak to one personally right now, but I do know that across you know a few sterilization reports or throughput reports, we can, we can get the information that's required. And then Jeff, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. No, I think that was a, a good answer there. Um, you know, we're continually looking at, at what the requirements are, what, what they're looking at in that process, whether it be Joint Commission, CMS, Amy, Amy or AORN recommends. So. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. This next question, what other BIs are compatible in SensiTrack? For example, do you work with ASP? Yeah, so our, our, our biological indicators as well as their associated incubators are all configurable. And since this as well as, you know, within census track, we stay on top of, of a lot of the industry leads. And so we're completely familiar with ASP. 
Um, and we also have a very fantastic working relationship with ASP, and we are very up to date with all of their assets as far as their sterilizers, their biological products, as well as their incubators. And the way that SenseTrack's designed is you can select like the ASP incubator you might have, and then we're immediately presented with all the associated biologicals. So it makes it a real streamlined process being able to select any of the ASP incubators or products that you might be working with. Okay, great. And then what about the three on clean trace software? Has Sensatrack been used for that? Jeff, would you be able to speak to that one? So with that, the 3M stuff is then incorporated into Sensatrack. Um, we don't interface directly with that software. Uh, you would utilize the 3M products with our software in that situation. Okay, wonderful. Um, Jacob, these next couple are coming your way. First one, right. how, how can I access event reported to quality feedback? Yeah, all right. So once quality events are created, what they do is they go to our quality feedback reports uh, report. So it's the report is a single report that's one repository of all the events that get created. And so it's a, it's a specific report that falls under our general category. Um, and so you would expand the general category of our reports. And this is kind of similar to some of the other um, answers from earlier. Um, just make sure that you have the right access levels to see the report you're looking for. If you've been looking for it and you can't find a quality, quality events report, the access levels you have might be preventing you from seeing it. Um, so always ensuring that you have the right access levels to see the report you're looking for is, is probably where I would start. Um, and, then make, and then being able to locate that. So all quality events, once again, go to our quality feedback report, which falls under our general category in our reporting module. Once that report is open and accessed, it can be completely filtered and customized. So if you want to look at events just from a particular date range or a particular department, or even just want to focus on, on one event, um, that report can then be customized and, and, and filtered to, to display all the events in a way that you want to see them. Okay, wonderful. Um, Jacob, case cart question was referring to tracking the needs. Can you, do you remember that specific question by chance? Yeah, being able to use the case cart function without the OWASH scheduler. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming when, when you say tracking the needs, I'm guessing being able to scan a cart and automatically see some sort of preference list or a pick sheet or something. Um, and that, that benefit does come with the OR scheduler. So we can either build case carts manually, and then we can refer to our paper, you know, pick sheets to know what we need, or we can go ahead and use the OR scheduler, and that would uh, provide us the needs for that case cart. So without the OR scheduler interface, there is no way for SenseTrack to, to have that communication. It's not going to know what's needed unless we have that interface. Okay. Is there a method to do repair or maintenance tracking for loose and peel packed items? Yeah, there is. So that would that would require our sense track advanced or we also call instrument track solution. And so that would that would require all the instruments that, that are in question to be individually marked either with an electronical uh, electrochemical mark or with a laser mark. Um, every instrument that gets marked, those marks are like a fingerprint. So you might have two adsins, but SenseTrack knows that the mark on adsin one makes it different from the mark on ADSEN 2. And so we can create very specific maintenance records for any individual product that's, late, that's, that's marked with a, with a chemical or laser mark. And so we can actually scan any sort of asset that's marked out to maintenance or, or back from, so we know when it left, we know who it went to, and we know um, when it came back. And so we can do that. It would just require our sensor track advance or instrument track solution. Okay, great. Uh, next question. We ran into an issue documenting everything needed for our immediate use sterilizer load. Does Census offer a solution for IUSS events? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so we, we encounter some stuff, with, some kind of issues like that sometimes with IUSS events because in addition to the normally expected um, the normally expected parameters that we're expected to log, IUSS loads also require additional information, such as why did we run the cycle, and then and we have to be able to also link the contents of that IUSS cycle to the case or the patient. And so within SensorTrack, we offer uh, capabilities to, to provide both of those solutions. And so we have a reason dropdown. So whenever, we're, whenever we are resulting the sterilizer load, so putting in all the cycle information, that would be when we go ahead and document this. So there would be a reason section right next to the cycle button. And we could click that reason button 
and it would provide a drop down. And SensiTrack comes pre built with about five or six of the most common reasons for running IUSS cycles, such as you know, quick turnaround time or, or a you know, contaminated item or, or compromised packaging. Um, that way we can document why this IUSS event occurred. Um, we also have the ability with our case tracking functionality to also marry those IUSS events to a particular case number. That way we have full traceability of, of what cases were tied to those IUSS events. So long story short, um, yes, we can we offer a solution for documenting everything required for IUSS events. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Jacob, how prepared is Census? This is a great question. How prepared is Census for any changes or addendums made to already existing compliance standards or expectations? <laughs> that is a really good question. Uh, so Census remains diligent in all standards adherence. We actually have an entire team dedicated to ensuring our customers remain in steady states of proper record management uh, with their Census Track utilization. And so if any standards if any standards change or are altered, Census can automatically push free updates to all of our customers without any downtime for them. So if we do know that something changes and we, 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 we put a patch or a fix into the application, uh, we'll distribute that to the customers, you know, without anyone usually even noticing because it requires no downtime. Um, also, the versatility of, of our product provides multiple strategies for documenting events. So even if something changes and we're working on a solution, SensiTrack's versatility allows us to track all sorts of things. Um, we can kind of get creative with like location scans or, or something we've talked about a lot is quality events. We can use quality events to document a lot of things um, and kind of get creative since they're completely configurable. Um, but we, we do stay on top of that. And once again, we have an entire team devoted to um, making sure that we're up to date, you know, daily pretty much with, with standards and, and anything that's expected for y'all, we also anticipate as well. Okay, wonderful. Um, the next question, Jacob, coming your way. We currently have a tracking system. Uh, it doesn't do all that SensorTrack can do. Is it easy to switch tracking system? <laughs> I think it is. And then um, a lot of our customer feedback is too. So so I actually, um, I, I've implemented SensorTrack multiple times. And I've also implemented at facilities that were in that position where they were transitioning from another electronic tracking system and they were switching over to SensorTrack. And, and we, we make it as painless as possible. Um, one, the application, we get lots of feedback that it's really user-friendly. And so people kind of uh, adapt to it very quickly. A lot of it is kind of form follows function, and it's very intuitive. So we, uh, initially, just being able to learn the system isn't usually a hurdle for our customers. In addition to that, we deploy an entire professional services team that's dedicated to handling your project. So early on into those phases of switching, we would identify all the issues we're anticipating and that we're used to seeing. Um, we've, we've done this number uh, numerous times, and so we're, we're familiar with that process of switching systems. And our professional services team has a lot of experience doing that. And so discussing and, and, and anticipating the issues that we might run into during that transition is all kind of you know, spoken and, and discussed before we even get there. That way we know that when we get on site for the transition, you know, that we're ready to, to handle it in whatever way works best for your facility. So as far as you know, switching labels or, or renaming conventions or editing count sheets um, or relabeling storage areas, we, we anticipate all that before we even get to implement. So we have a lot of experience with those transitions. And, and once again, I personally think it's, it's easy switch given, given the scope of these projects. And then I've also received lots of customer feedback that they felt that it was easier than they originally anticipated or expected. Okay, great. Um, this one will, can go out to either of you. How has Census prepared for organizations doing individual mask reprocessing? Are there any specific features? Now, that's an awesome question. I like that question because we have worked with um, manufacturers of the steril both sterilized brands for uh, gas plasma, hydrogen peroxide reprocessing, um, and we've created a couple go-bys that do that. There's ways we can capture them at the container level and at the individual instrument level. We can catch them at the container level for um, quant mass quantities of instruments or individual level if you're tracking that reprocessing of that, that N95 mask down to a specific user. Um, and on our um, website, our portal, we have those go-bys and instructions available. Okay, great. Jeff, this question is for you as well. Uh, will Census eliminate enhancement requests and concentrate on individual site requests since every hospital is different? 
Our goal is to continue with enhancement requests at this time. Enhancement requests can be driven by an individual site, but we have a team um, dedicated to looking at those enhancement requests. We bounce those, like Jacob has said, off regulatory requirements. And those enhancements that are uh, key for patient safety or key for regulatory compliance go first. Um, and then we'll look at individual requests secondary. But our goal really you know, is patient safety driven, so we're looking at that first then regulatory compliance um, for our enhancements. Okay. Um, how can I convince my ASC to document like this? I've been trying for 14 months, and they tell me we don't need them to. Jeff, can you answer that one? Now, can you repeat that one again? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How can I convince my ASC to document like this? I've been trying for 14 months, and they tell me we don't need to. Well, I mean, really what you need to look at is, okay, what are, what are the regulatory requirements? What are Amy's recommendations? What does AL Ryan recommend? What is the Joint Commission inspecting to? What CMS requirements do you have to meet to maintain uh, um, reimbursement? Um, and if you look at all of those things combined, it really drives you towards an electronic reprocessing system. Um, and then, again, patient safety always, always speaks very loudly. should speak the loudest. But then look at what the system does for you. Um, the efficiency, your return on investment um, is amazing when compared to papered record keeping. Um, our ability to track down to the PAR levels, our ability to track reprocessing to minimize the amount of gear required on site, uh, maximize availability for procedures. Um, you can't get that with a paper record keeping system. So electronic systems are really the way to go for patient safety, regulatory compliance, and then return on investment. I mean, that's your key driver there for an ASC. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to sneak in three more questions before we end, and as other questions come in, we will certainly address those via email. Um, the first question, how do you see the pictures associated with the quality feedback report? It should be a, a quick answer for you. Yeah, so, um, so once, since I've spoken to the quality event, I'll take that one. Um, so once you access the event you're looking for via the quality feedback report, you have ability to edit or go back and review that event. And so that's where you would access the picture. The pictures themselves don't display in the report. You have to find the event in question, and we would edit it or review it. And we have that interactive capability built within the report. So as you find your events, you should be able to edit or review it. And whenever you interact with that line item, it takes you directly to that event screen. And then we would be able to see all the images associated with it on that view there. So once again, the images aren't directly in the report, but they're directly accessible with the interactive edit or review feature for each, each individual quality event that's been created. Okay, wonderful. Are there any additional functions that have been added for reusable instrumentation processing during COVID-19? Uh, can, can you re, 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 uh, restate that one one more time, please? Yep. Are there any additional functions added that have been added since COVID-19 for re reusable instrument processing? Oh, okay. Yeah. So we haven't added any functionality, and and what we came came to find out whenever whenever um, this this already already kind of helps us address those issues, and we have a variety of strategies and features that have helped a numerous amount of our customers um, address these problems. And so Jeff spoke to one already. We, we have prime examples of being able to treat N95 masks, for example, as containers. That way we know that they're getting processed and reassembled correctly. That way there's no risk of any cross-contamination as they go through the process. Um, so we can always treat assets like containers or instruments, and in that way we can attach any sort of media file. So if there's anything that we want people to be aware of as we're reprocessing instruments associated with any sort of COVID-19 exposure, um, we would be able to see that. In addition to that, Synthetrack also offers a messaging system, and we have a really neat feature where we can create and attach messages specifically to, to containers. And so if there is an instrument set that is exposed to a COVID-positive environment, um, it's really awesome because people in the OR setting can go ahead and document that and attach that message to that asset. And then everywhere that asset gets scanned, all the, all the concurrent users that interact with it it will actually be presented with an automatic window that will present the to patient. them whatever was 
Yeah, whatever was communicated. So let's say the person in SPD gets the assets from the OR that were exposed to a COVID environment, the message would pop up and then we would see it. So we'd see, you know, attention or alert, this, this container was exposed to a COVID environment. And so we can also perpetuate that communication throughout the entire perioperative loop because those messages will populate whenever that container is scanned. And so what we found, once again, is that a lot of our features actually worked really well to kind of face, you know, a lot of the issues that were presented, you know, with the ongoing situation. Okay, wonderful. Um, and that is actually going to be it for time today. Thank you, Jacob and Jeff, so much for sharing your expertise. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on behalf of Beyond Clean and in partnership with Census Technologies. Uh, today and always, we encourage you to keep fighting dirty, and we will see you all again soon. Have a great day.